Are you a plan ahead cook? Well, no matter even if you're not. Today we're going to show you some great recipe ideas for ready when you are meals with crock pot cooking. Stay with us. Welcome to Let's Cook Together. I'm Barbara Nolan, and our guest cook today is Jennifer White from Hardyville, Kentucky. She teaches nutrition classes, has written a cookbook, and has some wonderful recipes to share with us today for ready when you are meals with crock pot cooking. Welcome to our show today, Jennifer. Thank you. Glad to be here. What will we be cooking today? Well, I just have to tell you that I love my crock pot. It is my most used tool in my kitchen besides my favorite knife. Well this will be a good show for me because I have one but don't use it much. Well great, we'll do a, a good recipe to inspire you to use your crock pot <laughs> more. Today we're going to do crock pot butternut squash soup. Oh really? Fantastic. And would you like to read the recipe? I'd be happy to. One medium butternut squash, one half medium onion diced, one half green bell pepper diced, one teaspoon of dried basil, one teaspoon of dried parsley, one eighth teaspoon of oregano, four cups of water, three and one half cups of diced canned tomatoes, that's a 29 ounce can, one cup of corn kernels, which are optional, and one half teaspoon of salt. Well, it sounds good. Well, let's start our recipe. Um, like I said, there are many advantages to using a crock pot. My favorite advantage is that it's ready when you are. Right. You can put the ingredients in at some time when you, when you have a few minutes, but then when you're tired or you don't have time, mm -hmm. but you need to eat right. and your family needs to eat, it's all ready and hot, ready and waiting for you. Great for working mothers that have to go to a job and Excellent. Yes. come home to the meal already ready. Exactly. Another advantage to crock pot cooking is that you really don't have to use as much oil as mm -hmm. you would use in other, in fact, you can eliminate it altogether in most recipes. Oh, well, that's a good thing to know. And the, the slow cooker cooks slowly, mm -hmm. so you don't have to, um, the, the flavors mingle better, mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about it burning, which is something that I really appreciate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously our butternut squash soup will have butternut squash in it, and I thought I'd tell you how to choose a good butternut squash. It's good to get the ones that are heavy, that are free of blemishes, and that are very firm because you know that it, it's fresh. fresh. Mm -hmm. One advantage to this vegetable is that you don't have to worry about this fresh vegetable spoiling. You know, mm -hmm. if you go grocery shopping once a week, you need to use up that lettuce, use up mm -hmm. that celery, but this will store for months in a cool, dry place, mm -hmm. so you can really stock up on it and use it as a vegetable if you need something and you're all out of your other vegetables. So we'll, we'll start making this recipe by peeling our butternut squash, which isn't very hard if you have the type of peelers that the handle is here and you just mm -hmm. peel down like this. Mm -hmm. You'll peel your butternut squash and then take a spoon to scoop out the seeds and cut them up into chunks as we have done here. We've used one butternut squash, cut it up into, into chunks and that's the first <coughs> ingredient. And it, you don't have to have an exact amount mm -hmm. because one medium-sized butternut squash will do just fine. What a bright, pretty orange it color. Is. This is a very colorful soup. We'll enjoy seeing this one. Then we put in a half of a medium onion and a half of a green bell pepper. You can use red if you like, but I use green because we're putting tomatoes in, mm -hmm. so it gives more. Nice color. Right. One teaspoon of basil, and you can crush it between your fingers mm -hmm. if you like. And sometimes I've used fresh herbs mm -hmm. in this recipe, but for convenience and quickness, we'll, we'll use the dried. And then one teaspoon of parsley. And an eighth of a teaspoon of oregano. We'll add our four cups of water, and you can add the tomatoes if you'd like. 
All right. Let's see if I can do this without yep. splashiness. <laughs> there we go. And then we'll put some corn in, which is optional. Three and a half cups of corn. I like the color that that adds to it. And um, we'll stir it up. We are, we'll add our salt after it's mm -hmm. done cooking. Sometimes salt can make t corn a little bit tough. I really like this recipe because butternut squash is such a good source of vitamin A mm -hmm. and fiber. So I like to add that into our diet as much as we can. More fiber, more fiber, more vitamin A. Most orange vegetables are high in vitamin A. Now, crock pots, all crock pots I found are different. So mm -hmm. you could say cook it for eight hours in one crock pot and it'd be done in one and not done in the other. So sometimes it takes a little experimenting. Mm -hmm. But in general, you can cook this for eight to nine hours on mm -hmm. low and it should come out nice. If you have an older crock pot, you may want to cook it on high because the older crock pots just don't heat up as well as mm -hmm. the newer one. Mine will bring it to a nice boil. Is so. there a difference in how much liquid you use when using a crock pot or would you just use a regular recipe? Is, are there you know, yes, there is a difference. You, need, you don't have to use as much liquid when you cook in a, with okay. a crock pot. It, it cooks at a very slow, low mm -hmm. temperature, mm -hmm. so it retains more of the liquids. Okay. So we'll cook this, and then when we're done cooking it, we'll add a half a teaspoon of salt, or you can add it to your taste, because mm -hmm. uh, often there's a different amounts of salt in the tomatoes. If you're, if you're using home canned tomatoes, and you know how much salt is in it, but mm -hmm. sometimes you don't know how much salt is in something, so you would want to salt it to taste. Okay. But about a half a teaspoon should work well. And it's such a colorful dish, and Very. you saw how easy it was. The, the thing that takes the longest is, is peeling the butternut mm -hmm. squash, but besides that, you just put it all in and you can have something quickly. If you plan ahead, you can have a wonderful hot meal just like that. Well, you've inspired ready. me to try to use my, cook, <laughs> my crock pot more. Well, let's show the uh, finished product of our soup right. now. It's very, very colorful. I think it's beautiful enough to oh, serve for company. That looks delicious. It's very colorful. Yes. We put a, a little sprig of herb on there, and it's actually a full meal in itself. It's so filling. Well, what is the next recipe we're going to make? Well, let's show another way that we can use our crock pot. Okay. And the way that I use it probably the most is to cook beans. Oh, okay. So let's do that. All right. Four cups dry red beans, uncooked, 10 cups of water, one garlic clove minced, one large onion diced, one teaspoon of dried parsley, one half teaspoon of dried basil, one quarter teaspoon of dried oregano, one cup of tomato puree, one tablespoon of honey, and one and one half teaspoons of salt. Okay. Well, we do dried beans often in our crock pot because they're such an easy um, main dish. They're very quick and simple and very good for us because beans are high in fiber and low in fat and mm -hmm. good source of vitamins and minerals. So I'm gonna show you um, how to do some beans in a quick and easy way. You buy the packages of dried beans at the mm -hmm. store. Um, doing dried beans instead of using canned beans helps you to control the amount of salt used. Mm -hmm. And I think they taste so much better too. Mm -hmm. You can get them nice and tender. So I pour them out on a towel and sort through them. You know, they're an agricultural product, so there might be some stones or dirt in them. And take those out. And I think this is an easy way to do it. My girlfriend taught me how to do it this way rather than putting them mm -hmm. all over the counter. And once you have them clean, you just can dump them into your colander and rinse them under some running nice. water and then add them to your crock pot. And for four cups of dry beans, we'll add about 10 cups of water. All crock pots cook differently. So mm -hmm. again, you may do some adjusting, but in general that should work just fine. Now we'll put it, this in our, in our cooker, in our slow cooker, mm -hmm. and cook it on high for 6 to 12 hours. It's wonderful that we can have such a, a wide range in time. Yes, yeah, so on high too. Right. Yeah, I didn't realize but you could do that. The, the longer you boil beans, the more tender and 
good they are. So, so these dry beans, would they get about twice the size or three times the size? About that. About mm -hmm. one cup of beans equals about two and a quarter cups mm -hmm. of cooked beans. One cup of dry beans equals that. You know, I cooked beans once, dried beans, and I cooked those little rascals and cooked them and cooked them and cooked them and they never did get saw. Oh, okay. Maybe you could give me an idea of what I did wrong or what the problem was. Well, it could be a number of things. You, the beans could have been old, so it would be of no fault of yours. <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. They, they just had some old beans mm -hmm. on the okay. shelf. Okay. So that might be it. Um, other things that you can do to help make sure that your beans turn out nice and tender is not to add any acidy product, All acidic right. product to your beans, like mm -hmm. lemon juice or uh, tomato sauce mm -hmm. or anything. So in this recipe, we'll make sure we add the tomato sauce at the end. Okay. But it's likely you got some old beans. Old that beans. happens. Okay. Um, so we'll put this in the crock pot and we'll cook it and it's it's nice that we can just have it ready whenever we want and the mm -hmm. longer you cook it the better they are they're mm -hmm. so nice and tender we want to cook them on high but some of the old crock pots just don't cook high enough the beans need to boil mm -hmm. in order to be well digestible mm -hmm. or di well digested um, by your body they they really do need to boil so make sure that if you're trying to cook beans in a crock pot that you have one of the newer models that cook Get hot well, yes. right. Okay, right. well that's a good thing to know. So we've got, we're going to put this over here and pretend that it's cooking in our crock pot. And while, when our beans are done cooking, we're going to add some sautéed onions. So we'll get our onions sautéing here. And then once they get a little bit soft, we will add our garlic. And of course, if you want to, you can add lots of garlic and mm -hmm. onions to your beans. We like to add whole cloves sometimes. If you put these in at the beginning of your cooking time, they tend to lose their flavor. Mm -hmm. So that's why I cook the beans first and then add the sautéed onions and the garlic. Maybe you can show us our, what our cooked beans look like while I sauté this onion. This is what they'll look okay. like when they're cooked. Mm. Before we've, and of course, we can eat them this way mm -hmm. without adding Just anything plain. to them. Sure, mm -hmm. a little salt and they're delicious. They smell very good. But if we want to add a little more flavor to them, we can saute this onion and garlic together and add that to the beans. While this is sauteing, we can, whoa, <laughs> jumped in garlic. We could add the one teaspoon of parsley, the half a teaspoon of basil and a quarter teaspoon of oregano. And then we'll put our, our onion and garlic in there and stir that up. Things are smelling good. Mm -hmm. Like a good pot of beans. And then a few other things we want to add to that to give it a little more flavor is a tablespoon of honey. And yes, we'll add the, the tomato puree as well. You don't have to, the honey's optional, but it does give mm -hmm. it a, it does kind of tend to bring the flavor out a little. So you want me to go ahead and add this now? Yes, that's a mm -hmm. cup of tomato puree, which is simply tomatoes. So we know it's a healthful product. And we'll mix that up. Now, for best results of, oh, we want to add the salts too, the salt, mm -hmm. one and a half teaspoons of salt. For best results, we'll want to cook that a little longer to help the flavors mingle, even though we've mm -hmm. already sautéed the onions, so they don't really need to cook anymore. Um, it, it does taste better if you let the flavors mingle. So if you're coming home from work or something, just add these mm -hmm. ingredients to it, and while you relax or everybody gets together for dinner, it, it can be cooking, and so it can be ready to go when you are. Well, that's wonderful. And we have a final product here that you can see what it looks like. Oh, yes. Nicely ready to eat. As my husband would say, it looks good enough to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. I like beans. They're yes. so nutritious. And they're very easy. Very they really easy. are. A real southern type yes. dish. When you're, when you're really... Beans, cornbread. Mm -hmm. When I'm pressed for time, I usually will make beans. Mm -hmm. And my husband likes them, so that mm -hmm. really helps a lot that he likes them. Um, but you know, dinner is not the only thing you can cook in a crock pot. In the morning, when you really don't feel like cooking, you can have breakfast ready and waiting for you. All ready for you wake up. Yes. It's smelling good down there. Yes. So maybe we can make a breakfast recipe. I always hear about that, but I've never tried it. Okay. We're going to fix creamy breakfast rice. 
The ingredients are two cups of short or long grain brown rice, eight cups of water, and one teaspoon of salt. So that's simple enough. It is really simple, quick and easy. You know, most people don't think of rice for breakfast usually. Mm -hmm. It's a side dish to a loaf or something like that, to beans, but it's delicious for breakfast. And so we're going to use two cups of rice. Now, if you have the privilege of knowing where, where to obtain short grain brown rice, definitely try the short grain brown rice. Is it even better? Oh, it's delicious with creamy right. breakfast rice because it has such a chewy texture mm -hmm. and it's a little bit sweet, so it's really good. But if you can't, the long grain works mm -hmm. great too. Then you just add a little bit of salt to your taste. I use about one teaspoon. And then the, the ratio is for every one cup of grain, use four cups of water. So we are putting in eight cups of water. And that's it. Is that quick or what? You just put yeah, it so in. many people complain that they don't eat breakfast because they just don't have time to fix it. So this would be a wonder, wonderful uh, solution to their problem. Exactly. Just put something quick like this on at night and when you get up in the morning it's all ready for Exactly. It. You just put it in your crock pot and you can really cook it on low or high mm -hmm. all night. Really? Yes, if you cook it on high, you'll get a, a crispy edge around mm -hmm. the outside, and my children like to, to take that out and eat that separate. They would just really like that. Um, one way to make sure that your rice doesn't stick to the edge of your crock pot is to coat the inside with lecithin. Mm -hmm. It works really well, but if you don't have lecithin, you can do this little trick. Turn it off about a half an hour before you're ready to eat, and the, the rice will soften it up. Right, that mm -hmm. will pull away from the sides. You know, ready to eat, box cereal is so expensive it is and this is just a good alternative and it's also very difficult to find box cereal that doesn't have refined products in it such as refined flours or sugar so this doesn't have refined products in it and much it also less has a lot of preservatives as well right I think. the box cereal so this mm -hmm. is just nice and good for you now if you think that's going to be a problem to not have a sweet cereal that's okay. Just add some raisins and dates and, mm -hmm. and dried fruit, other kinds of dried fruit mm -hmm. or fresh fruit, and it'll sweeten your cereal right up. Or you can add your own honey to it. But that way you can control the sweetener. Mm -hmm. And it's much less It's expensive. a natural sweetener that's slowly released in your body. Right, mm -hmm. not the refined mm -hmm. sugar that you get from the box cereals. Um, we have a, a finished product that we've put yes, some fruit on. Yes, let me on. show it. This looks so good. And this is just one way that you can garnish mm -hmm. it. Of course, there are innumerable ways that you just put whatever is your favorite type of fruit on I it. I imagine you would put milk with this, your soy sure, milk. Sure, if you'd mm -hmm. like. Sometimes what we like to do is eat it like we would eat grits mm -hmm. on, the, on a plate. Mm -hmm. It's very thick, so on a plate with a little salt so on it's top. Versatile. Yes, yes. That's a wonderful, good breakfast. But of course, rice isn't the only thing you can make for breakfast. We can what make other some, ideas do you have? <laughs> we can make some apple oats. Oh, great. Okay, well the recipe for it calls for four cups of rolled oats, seven cups of water, two cups of apple juice, two cups of diced apples, one teaspoon of vanilla, one cup of chopped nuts, and one half teaspoon of salt. You know, for some people, breakfast is oatmeal. But then some people don't really like oatmeal. So I think that this recipe is a good way to help those who don't like oatmeal enjoy it a little mm -hmm. bit more. It's kind of naturally sweet. Kind of fancied up. Yes. We'll start with four cups of rolled oats. Now oats break the rule of the four to one ratio for cooking mm -hmm. grains. That, that rule really holds best for whole grains, the berries. Mm -hmm. but this, the four cups of rolled oats, only requires seven cups of water. So we'll put our water in. Now, we want to make it sweet, but we don't want to put sugar in it. One good way to do it is to add juice. Mm -hmm. And I chose apple juice, but we've made it with orange juice, pineapple juice. Um, we even made it with grape juice once, and it was mm -hmm. a really interesting color, <laughs> but everybody liked it. But it's, it's a good natural sweetener. And I used two cups of apple juice in this recipe. Again, we can add even more of a more natural sweetener by using fresh fruit. 
So we're adding some fresh apples. Yes, some apples to that. And so it's a great way to get the, the fruit in our diet at the same time as making our oatmeal sweet. And a half a teaspoon of salt really helps make, give it a little bit of a buttery flavor. Now we'll put that in our slow cooker and cook it on low for seven to nine hours. Mm -hmm. And if you wake up in the morning, you're going to smell a wonderful nice smell. Nice way to wake up. Yes, huh? going through the house, you're just going to be ready for breakfast. And there's no work involved right in the morning when you no. don't feel like doing no. work, it's all ready. When it's done cooking, then we'll want to add some vanilla when it's all done cooking. And we'll um, add some, also some chopped nuts mm -hmm. to it. You can add nuts at the beginning of the cooking time, and they, they get an interesting soft texture. Mm -hmm. But if you like your nuts crunchy, then you can add them and after they're done. Good. It's just a really good option, a really good way to help get off of the, the sugar bre mm -hmm. sugary breakfast mm -hmm. by putting in your own fresh fruits, uh, maybe a little bit of honey, and using juice to cook the grains mm -hmm. with. And it's so easy and so much less expensive than the box cereals. And these nuts have a lot of benefits to them too, don't they? They do. They're very high in fiber. So you're not only getting a lot of fiber in these oats, mm -hmm. but you're getting the fiber in the nuts. Fiber in the apples as well. Right? Yes, right. Um, a lot of times, even when the breakfast cereals are made with grains, a lot of times the grains are still refined. Mm. So we know that the oats are not refined. So they, they retain the fiber. They retain the essential fatty acids and the minerals, so they're, it, it's good to eat it as close to the way that God provided us with it So as this possible. is a wonderful thing you're doing for your family by doing this. Yes. Thing. So let's see what the final product looks right. like. Oh, it looks Very good. good. Mm. <laughs> so good and wholesome. Now we could put some little bit of soy milk yes. on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And oh, that looks good. You could add some. Um, toast and maybe a fresh banana or a fresh orange and you have just a, a wonderful breakfast very good for you you won't get the the sugar high and the low about mid-morning if you eat a good hearty breakfast like this the fiber will just keep keep it with you and keep you going I suppose if you want to twist on this you could put add some cardamom to it sure yes for a, yes. For a cinnamon like right flavor. right and you can vary the the different kinds of fresh fruits sometimes mm -hmm. we'll cook it without fruit mm -hmm. and then add blueberries oh. when we're done That's they're our so nutritious you could take the frozen blueberries out of the freezer mm -hmm. put them on your hot oats and they just kind of mm -hmm. get the little frosty <laughs> look on the outside mm -hmm. of them we really like that a lot or any kind of fresh fruit that, the, that you have mm -hmm. will work just wonderfully with these oats. So an inexpensive yet good for you breakfast that's easy with oh, the fantastic. Whole, using the whole grains as the way that God prepared them for mm -hmm. us. Well, we're going to take a short break now and we'll be back in just a moment. We hope you've enjoyed cooking with Jennifer White. Now let's take a moment to review our crock pot cooking recipes. For the butternut squash soup, you will need one medium butternut squash, one half of a medium onion, one half of a green bell pepper, one teaspoon of dried basil, one teaspoon of dried parsley, one eighth teaspoon of oregano, four cups of water, three and one half cups of diced canned tomatoes, one cup of corn kernels, which is optional, and one half teaspoon of salt. For the slow cooker red beans, you will need four cups of dry red beans, uncooked, 10 cups of water, one clove of garlic, one large onion, one teaspoon of dried parsley, one half teaspoon of dried basil, one quarter teaspoon of dried oregano, one cup of tomato puree, one tablespoon of honey, and one and one half teaspoons of salt. For the creamy breakfast rice, you will need two cups short or long grain brown rice, eight cups of water, and one teaspoon of salt. For the overnight apple oats, you will need four cups of rolled oats, seven cups of water, two cups of apple juice, two cups of diced apples, 
one teaspoon of vanilla, one cup of chopped nuts, and one half teaspoon of salt. If you would like information on how you can contact Jennifer, or if you would like to receive today's recipes, please write to 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896, or call 1-800-752-3226. Again, that's 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. Now let's take a look at our finished recipes with Jennifer. Welcome back. Well, Jennifer, what do you have anything else you want to tell us about crock pot cooking? Well, you know, crock pot cooking really can make life easier because you can have things cooking while you're away or mm -hmm. while you're busy and you don't have to worry about watching it, being afraid that it's going to burn or overcook. Things Even like while you're sleeping. <laughs> right, right. It's just, it's a really good way mm -hmm. to cook things on a busy schedule, when you're on a busy mm -hmm. schedule. And I really, like I said, I use my crock pot nearly every day. It's very convenient. So I encourage you to try to use I the intend, crock pot more. I intend to start using one more. Wonderful. Well, how about if we look at the, the products that we All right, let's do that. Need. First, we'll start with our butternut squash soup. It's a wonderful, healthful dish that is quick to make and we can make in the crock pot. It's full of vitamin A, has a good amount of fiber, and it even has some calcium in it. One cup of butternut actually has 84 milligrams of calcium in it. So it's a, a very healthful dish and very colorful, beautiful, even pretty enough to serve for company. And you can have it cooking while you're at church so that when your company gets home, you have a, a hot dish ready and waiting for them. No cooking needed. That's wonderful. Yes. And then next we made some beans in our crock pot which really is the ideal crock pot food. They cook so nicely in the crock pot, much better than they do in the pan. Very nice texture. They just get softer, don't they? Yes, yes. And they're really the perfect main dish because they're a good source of minerals and protein, high in fiber, low in fat. Mm -hmm. So we made our, our beans there, our red beans, and then we decided that we would make some breakfast in a crock pot. So we made creamy rice and garnished it with some fruit. And of course, you can be creative with that and vary your fruits and nuts. And we made the traditional oatmeal breakfast that we sweetened up with some fresh apples mm -hmm. and some good apple juice so we could sweeten it naturally. And it's just a good high fiber breakfast that will stick with you through the day. I know we will all enjoy trying these. I know I will. Well, our time is almost up for today. I can't believe it's almost gone. Thank you for coming, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. And I hope you will join with us next time and let's cook together.